Hello, boys and girls. There's a surprise in the book we're going to read from today. Maybe you can guess where Robert is going and who Mike is. Robert was four years old. For a whole year, ever since he was three, he had gone to the picture book hour at the public library every Tuesday morning. When Robert reached the library with its big front doors and hall of shining marble, the first thing he did was to say good morning to Mr. Noble. Mr. Noble was always smiling, and he always stood behind a little desk just inside the door. And Mr. Noble always shook his head and said the same thing. My, my, tough boys and girls, these preschoolers, it's never too cold or too hot or too snowy or too rainy for them to come to the library. Robert always smiled back proudly, and he strutted just a little because Mr. Noble made him feel grown up. Robert liked the picture book hour. He liked Phyllis and Norman and Jackie and Carl and all the other girls and boys who came every Tuesday. And he liked Mrs. Mullen who showed them the pictures in the books and told the story. She had such a pleasant voice. There were little laughs just around the corners in it. But best of all, Robert liked what came after the story. Then he might choose a book to take home and keep for a whole week. Robert always wanted the same book. That book was Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. The steam shovel's name was Mary Ann, and Robert thought that was very funny. Of all the books in Mrs. Mullen's room, Robert liked Mike Mulligan best, and he wanted Mike Mulligan every Tuesday. Mother would say patiently, but Robert, you know Mike Mulligan by heart now, Mrs. Mullen would say patiently. It would be nice to let Carl or Harold take Mike this week, Robert. Well, if Robert felt good and pleasant, he would take another book just to please them. But if he felt cross and a little bad, he would stick out his lip and stalk off, leaving Mother to follow with some other book. Robert was quite sure that Mike was his best friend. And because he liked Mike so very much, Robert thought that the whole library had been built as a house for Mike. He always called the library Mike's house. He never said, I'm going to the library. He always said, I'm going to Mike's house. One Tuesday, when Robert woke up, it was blowing and blustering outside. The windows rattled. The trees tossed their branches. It's a real blizzard, Robert. Don't you think we'd better stay home today, said Mother. Robert shook his head. Oh, no, he said. You remember, Mother, Mr. Noble at Mike's house says preschool boys and girls are tough. I can't stay home because it's a blizzard. Mother laughed and said, If you're that tough, I guess I'll have to be tough, too. I'll hurry with my work, so we'll be on time. But even though Mother hurried, there were a little, they were a little late. At the corner nearest to Mike's house, where Mother stopped the car, she let Robert out. You run down to Mike's house and go straight in, Robert. You mustn't be late. I'll pick you up as usual after the picture book story hour. Just as Mother drove off, a big wind came whistling up behind Robert. It shoved him around. It snatched off his red cap and went whistling down the street, tossing the red cap in the air and catching it when it came down. Robert ran after it. A whole block down the street he ran. The wind had dropped his cap, and he could see it lying on the sidewalk. But just as he stooped to pick it up, the wind gave another shrill whistle and sent it spinning away down the sidewalk like a bright red top. Robert had to stand still and laugh. He was still laughing all by himself when a big boy came up to him with a runaway cap in his hands. This yours, kid? he asked. 
Yes, Robert said. It got away from me. So I see, said the big boy, and he jammed the cap down hard over Robert's ears. Hang on to it, he said, and hardly waited for Robert to thank him. And then Robert looked around. There was a candy store and a paint store and a store with horses' harnesses in the window. But there was no Mike's house anywhere in sight. Robert looked up the street, and he looked down. He looked across the street. He didn't know where he was. He turned round and round and round. Then he stood perfectly still and thought hard. What was it that his mother had told him to do if he ever got lost? Of course, he was to look for a policeman. So Robert looked up the street, and he looked down the street. But before he saw a policeman, he heard a big, cheerful voice booming out, Wait for me, young fellow. Wait for me. The big voice came closer and closer. Robert saw a shiny police car sliding along the curb toward him. The big voice came from the loudspeaker on top, and it was talking to him. He ran to the curb where, where the car stopped, and a big policeman got out. How'd you know I wanted you? Robert asked the policeman. Oh, I watched you blow down the street, the big officer said. And then I saw you turn round and round just like a pinwheel. And I said to myself, business for you, Jensen. Get going. Now tell me, Sonny, what's your name? Robert Austin. Robert Austin, the officer repeated. He wrote it down in a little book. And I suppose they call you Bobby? Oh, no, Robert told him in a shocked voice. I'm Robert. Good, said the officer. Fine manly name, Robert. Know where you live? 134 Gorsline Street, Robert said. Good, said the officer again, and he wrote that in his notebook. If you know where you live, you're not very much lost. Now tell me, Robert, where were you going? To Mike's house, Robert told him promptly, and my mother's going too after she parks the car. Mike's house, said Officer Jensen. Hmm. Happen to know this Mike's other name? Oh, yes, said Robert. It's Mulligan. Good, said the policeman. Now suppose we just step into Rocco's grill here for a minute so I can use the telephone. He took Robert's hand, and they went into a lovely place. It looked just like a streetcar. A pretty waitress with lots of yellow curls laughed when she saw the big policeman and Robert. Big hall, I see, she said. The policeman and Robert laughed, too. This is my friend Robert, Lillian, the officer said. Hot milk for two, please, while I use the phone. The waitress put a glass of hot milk down on the counter for Robert and a cup of coffee for the policeman. But he said hot milk for two, said Robert. Oh, that's just his little joke, Robert, Lillian answered. Now you drink yours quick. It'll thaw you out. The hot milk was making him feel all comfortable inside when Officer Jensen came back from the telephone booth. Nobody answers at your house, Robert, he said, so I can't take you straight home. I know, Robert said. My father's at work, and my mother's parking the car. I see, said the policeman. We'll have to work on this Mike Mulligan clue, then. Only his name's not in the phone book. Tell me, Sonny, is, um, is Mr. Mulligan a friend of your father? Well, Robert said slowly, father used to like him, but he says he's tired of him now. Uh, I see, said the policeman again. But what I mean is, he is a grown-up, isn't he? N not just a youngster. Oh, yes, he's a grown-up. Robert was very sure about that. And does he live alone? No. He lives with Mary Ann, Robert told him. What's his house like, the policeman wanted to know. Oh, it's very big, Robert explained. You go up steps and steps and steps to the front door. And inside, there are two big vases without any flowers in them. And then you go up in the elevator to the room where Mike is. 
<laughs> said the policeman. He tugged at the collar of his tunic. Come here a minute, Lil Lillian, he called to the waitress. Do you know of any house like this around here, he asked. This Mike Mulligan sounds like a big shot. Tell Lillian what kind of a house your friend lives in, Robert. And Robert said again, you go up steps and steps and steps to the front door. And inside, there are two big vases without any flowers in them. And wait a minute, Robert, Lillian interrupted. If there aren't any flowers in those vases, what is in them? Just sand, Robert said, so people can put their cigarettes out. The policeman tugged at his collar again. All at once, Lillian began to laugh. The only house around here that sounds anything like that is the public library, she said. Robert took his last swallow of milk and put his glass down. He nodded solemnly at Lillian. That's where Mike Mulligan lives, in the library. The policeman gulped his whole cup of coffee down in one big swallow. Then he said to Robert, Let me get this straight, Robert. Your friend Mike Mulligan lives in the public library? Yes, Robert said. He lives in a book in the library. Do you know where that is? Well, I can find it, the policeman said with a big laugh, and we'd better get going. This friend of yours, this, this Mike Mulligan, he must be a regular guy. I sure want to meet him. You'll love him, Robert said as he swung the policeman's big hand. He'll be your friend, too. They went around the corner and up the block to the library. Picture book hour was over, and they met all the children coming out. But Robert didn't care. This was a big day, a very big day for him. And he was sure that meeting Mike Mulligan would make it a big day for Officer Jensen, too. Goodbye, boys and girls.